What's goody good, fam? I'm Jason Nell Perez, supervising instructor for the Central Florida Insurance School, also known as the InsuranceSchool.com. Now, I'm a department. All right. What's goody good, fam? I'm Jason L. Perez, supervising instructor for the Central Florida Insurance School, also known as the InsuranceSchool.com, a Department of Financial Services authorized insurance education provider. What does that mean? That means the state of Florida says, yo, Jay, we love your content. I don't know if they would use the words love, but they made sure that everything that you're going to need for either pre-licensing or continuing education is contained in this segment. And what do I mean? Well, if you're in the pre-licensing section right now, you're still in the same episode. This is episode one of law. Why? Because these are the minimum requirements. We also started here because some of you guys are in continuing education. This is your, your four hours law and ethics. It used to be five hours. Well, this year, everything moves down to four hours because this is just kind of basic stuff, right? Now, that brings us into this course. While they're, why, why are they colliding right now? Because in pre-licensing, we have to talk about CE, licensing requirements. We have to talk about violations, state regulation, uh, who is the chief financial officer and all that stuff, right? Well, in pre-licensing, they give you 20 hours for me to review all that. Pretty much that entire portion of the test is contained in the four-hour law and ethics review. Why do they require us to take this course? every two years because although it's basic it is the basic things that you need to know in order to share the right information with your people or to make sure that you're within you know within your guidelines all right so this section if you're following along in the blog along on the insurance school.com this blog here is the rules of engagement aka law and ethics it's broken down into uh I believe, David, what do we have? We have 15 different segments. I believe we have another five different segments that have just violations, which are great ways for you to tell the story, right? So think about it this way. If you went to Investopedia, you have a, a title or uh, a keyword, a glossary, right? And they come in and they just, it's like a textbook. It's just a digital textbook. Well, here, what we're going to do is in each episode, we have a bunch of stories. So we're not just going to go ahead and talk about violations. We're going to jump into press releases and things like that. So uh, we'll, at, the, at the end, we'll, we'll get you into the, the roadmap. But right now, when we started, I identified myself, right? Everything we do in the business of insurance, we have to properly identify ourselves. The most important word that I used there was authorized. Why? Because if you don't, if you're not authorized by the Department of Financial Services to have a conversation about insurance, it's a crime, a flat out crime. That's why we're opening up with continuing education because, hey man, you don't want to inadvertently get a job for, uh, you know, some agency somewhere and they're having you do marketing for insurance because if you don't have a license, you can't market insurance. These are consumer protections, all right? Well, I, I'm already diving in too deep. Let, where, where are my tech-savvy locals at, all right? I need you guys to raise your hand. Why do I call you locals? Because this is Florida. This is a Florida-authorized class. If you're in Georgia, no, sorry, my northern brothers. Can't watch this class for credit. But raise your hand, raise your hand, raise your hand. What's wrong with you people, man? Put your hand down. You know I can't see you. So, anyway... Uh, but I just want to make sure that you're down with the text lingo. I'm not talking about some weird emoji conversation, including like an eggplant or a goat or anything like that. That's just weird. I'm talking about basic stuff like HMU. What? Hit me up. Hit me up. Yo, so I'm having this conversation. If you need, if, if any of you guys, I know that some of you boomers are taking this class, right? And I love that because seniors helping seniors, right? Right on. Woo. Medicare. <laughs> anyway, so, uh, if you haven't noticed, this is and this is your first course with me, that dot 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 anyway, that's like that's like Biden on a teleprompter, right? Anytime I say something bad, I'm just gonna go ahead and blame it on David. He put it on the teleprompter, and damn it, you know, if you put it on the teleprompter, Burgundy's gonna read it. <laughs> so if I say anything wrong and anybody wants to throw out some cancel buttons on me, it was David's fault. David did it, he put it on my 
my teleprompter. It wasn't me. Anyway, we're back to like that hit me up, right? What does hit me up mean? I asked you guys if you were into text lingo and this guy's talking about, you know, anchorman and Alex. <sighs> hit me up is how the millennials like David say, give me a call back, right? HM up, HMU, hit me up. What's another one? Oh, God, another one. <sighs> Shake my head, right? All, and all, all these new conversational shortcuts, they're pretty easy. They just require a little bit of effort to understand. I know what you're thinking. Like, I already know this stuff. I get it. I get it. That's actually my point, all right? The rest of this course is just as easy to remember, but I do like throwing in a little pop culture in there because those are ways that you're going to be able to communicate on Instagram, social media, LinkedIn. Not everything needs to be all, you know... NAFA handbook rigid and dry. I mean, yes, we are supposed to do CE, but uh, no one said it had to be drastically boring, which is why we're giving you the iPower Moves podcast. What? You know me. I love, what did I just download, guys? Why don't you just download to me? Anyway, I love the fact that we have an edit button because during the live class, I have no edit button. And it sometimes doesn't work out. Um, but in this section here, I, I try still, guys, I'm going to try to avoid the textbooks and the glossaries like COVID, okay? Instead, we're going to talk about the current events and we're going to identify laws by poking fun of the people who are recently arrested for committing insurance crimes in Florida. Seriously, the arrogance of this genius is going to leave you SMH. What does that mean? You, come on, shake my head. Don't leave me shaking your head, right? Come on, HM up, hit me up. I don't even, David, I don't even know how to say it right. I'm over here like still sliding it in like HM up. Uh, that's like, that's how Gen X takes a millennial term and, and mutilates it so no one understands us. Anyway, dot, dot, dot. So the next few episodes, they basically just identify the course core topics, okay? This informal tone, look, it's not just for my opening monologue and then all of a sudden I'm going to go ahead and sit behind the desk and crack open a, a textbook, all right? We're going to keep it simple. I'm going to talk to you like you're my BFF. Look at me dropping these acronyms. You better get used to these acronyms, all right? Because in this class, we have Department of Financial Services. Do you think I'm going to say that or do you think I'm going to abbreviate it with DFS or department? That's why I'm hitting you with these acronyms. What else do we have? We have Offices of Insurance Regulations. We're not going to say that too many times either. We're going to be like OIR. So in a little bit, man, I'm going to be dropping acronyms on you like ba 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 ba. That's why I want you to make sure that you can keep up with the simple things like shake my head, SMH, you know, HMU. That's hit me up. Why? Because all you pre-licensing people, you know you got questions. And so make sure that you check the schedule because we do host about 40 hours, four, zero, 40 hours of instructor time every single week live. All right. And if you don't like me, that's okay. We got other instructors with a little less personality you might like. So anyway, David, can you take that off my teleprompter, please? Um, but anyway, uh, so like I said, the, ne the next few episodes, they just really talk about the core topics, all right? Um, so let's just start here. Let's just huddle around this CE campfire, right? Because I'm going to have a few relevant stories for you right after these messages from I flash for you. What? I flash for you. Man, can you get your mind out of the gutter, please? We have free insurance flashcards for you, all right? The keywords and concepts are all highlighted in our flashcards. They're also going to appear in the green boxes if you got all analog and downloaded this and you're like in your PDF right now and you're actually highlighting things like my mother would do. Yeah, these keywords that would be in the flashcards are right underneath. You see where it says continuing education and compliance period, all right? So this here, these are all compliments of iFlash for you. And the reason we call it that, these insurance flashcards for you, if you go to iFlashForYou.com um, and you point that, you just type in the name of your course, like this one here is Rules of Engagement, it'll, it'll give you the flashcard series that you can use to follow along. So like right here on this first bullet point, we have continuing education and compliance periods. Look, guys, I'm not trying to get you to follow me through a maze and you know I'm not trying to hide what I'm going to test you on. This is it right here. This is literally what the state, if, if we went through, most of you guys are listening to this, but some of you guys are watching this. Bam. All right. This page right here, this is exactly what the state wants us to talk about. Okay. So why would I hide it? They want me to tell you that all newly licensed insurance agents in Florida must compete, complete 24 hours of continuing education every two years. Okay. Yo, well, Jay, what's newly bro? 
Good question. I'm glad you asked. Newly basically means that you've been licensed for six years. The six years number is a big deal, not because it's six years collectively, <clears throat> but like I said, every two years, well, those are called compliance periods, right? So if you've been licensed in good standing for six consecutive years, the Department of Financial Services is going to give you a four hour CE discount. In theory, they're thinking that this six year benchmark means that you learn something along the way. OK, so these compliance periods are two years long, which means starting on your fourth compliance period. So you've been licensed for six years. That means you completed three compliance periods at 24 hours of continuing education. Right. So but starting your fourth compliance period, insurance agents are only going to be responsible for 20 hours of CE torture. <laughs> Maybe that's that way of, you know, the Department of Financial Services saying, hey, rookie, good job for making it eight years in the insurance business. Hopefully you, you built the book of business by now, but that's another topic. If dot, 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 you have been in the business for eight years, shameful plug, contact the insurance school if you ain't making any money because we'll show you how to do this thing. What? Did it really say that? Yeah, you see the hat I'm wearing. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> all right so anyway let's talk about all you uh you boomers out there following along with this in the print version if you're in the uh if you're checking this out on a podcast style great all the keywords like i said are going to be all in your flashcards. but in the text you see all these exaggerations and everything that i'm floating over right now all the bold words and the self-explanatory colors we dropped these gems for you to find, okay? Like I said, we didn't hide them. They're in the middle of the street. You're supposed to be following me. You just pick them up as we go, okay? These aren't just any type of nuggets. We're talking about definitely tested topics. If the words are all dressed up like they're off to prom, believe me, fam, it's important, okay? Green is always going to mean that there's an insurance flashcard for you just waiting to elaborate on this. So if you were following along, that green right there, there would literally be a flashcard just highlighting don't forget i flash for you is highlighted green because i flash is only flashing tested topics all right so before i transition into talking about ce facts for compliance purposes let's flash back to this informal tone that i'm still rocking yes the department of financial services aka the dfs does require us to do continuing education all right but if you're cool with this, they do not require us to be boring. Not at all. They just want us education providers to convey facts. There's no laws against me telling stories and acting like life in Florida is actually interesting. Haven't you heard hashtag Florida man? Ethics. I know you're thinking, ew, not me. Conversations about stupid criminals are just overflowing in my mind. Florida man memes. What? <laughs> I got Florida man memes flashing before my eyes. For instance, have you heard about the salty crime family? Press release time! That's what I mean by storytelling, okay? Look, I can send you to chapter 26 and I can say, hey, go ahead and read about fraud. Or I can tell you about how the Florida CFO, Jimmy Petronas, announced the arrest of four suspects behind a $230,000 insurance fraud scheme in, in Tampa. Now, this one here, I know what, you know, Professor said, Marty, don't ever go back to 2020. But this one here is from February 20th of 2020 uh, because I like it. Why? Because it's about four brothers. I would pronounce their names, their first names, but... I don't get it. There's like a Iman and a Fozzy and, you know, and I'm not talking about Muppets or something. It's not Fozzy Bear. This is Fozzy Salty, right? So anyway, him and his four brothers, the Salty Crime family. I kind of like it because I can't pronounce their first name. We're just going to, we're just, we're just going to call them Salty Crime family. Anybody got a problem with that? No, because if you're related to them, then you know what they did, right? And since they threw it on Front Street and we got press releases on it, it's not like we're talking trash about somebody who did something good. We're just sitting back amongst BFFs, pointing our finger at somebody that got arrested and saying, aha, aha, right? So in a nutshell, dot, dot, dot. The Florida Department of Financial Services insurance investigators discovered that the salty crime family had been staging minor traffic accidents in gas stations. They started in June of 2016 and they had it running no problem until it screeched to a halt on, in April of 2019. Why? 
Because these guys were submitting claims to insurance companies, but the cars they were claiming to be damaged were never damaged. In the three years the salty crime family raised it, ran their scheme, they pocketed approximately $230,000 from fraudulent invoices. What? If you're in the boomer version PDF, that is bold, baby, bold, fraudulent invoices, okay? What does that mean, Jay? Well, it just means that they were submitting phony invoices to their insurance companies for repairs and collecting the money. That's fraud. Well, the joke's on these salty dudes now because since they never fixed any of the cars, DFS is going to fix them. These four banditos were all arrested and booked on racketeering and conspiracy to commit racketeering charges. That uh, sounds serious to me. Like, I, I heard racketeering and I instantly started thinking like Al Capone. What? How serious are these violations? Well, all four members of the salty crime family had their bail set at $1.2 million each. If convicted, they face up to 30 years in prison. Ow! Woof! If you were watching the video, you know I just flinched like somebody grabbed my butt, but you didn't hear that sound. What? I heard after booking the salty crime family, one of them was heard saying, we wouldn't have got away, we would have got away for it with the money. I'm gonna go back to that. Uh, cause I'm gonna take a, someone grab my butt out there. Ouch. All right. <laughs> uh, how serious are these violations? Well, all four members of the salty organized crime family had their bail set at $1.2 million each. If convicted, they face up to 30 years in prison. <laughs> Ow! Yo, you better watch out. Don't drop it. Don't drop it. But you ain't hear that from me. After booking, I heard the salties were saying, we would have gotten away with the money if it wasn't for the Florida CFO and his meddling investigators from the DFS Division of Forensic and Investigative Services. Well... That last part may or may not be fake news, but I do want you to take away from there is that the Department of Financial Services does have an investigative division, which is called the Division of Forensic and Investigative Services. It just flashed up there on the screen. You know it's in the, I just flashed it for you guys. The reason I flashed it for you is because it's in the flashcards, right? I flash for you. No, that's why you're here. You love when I flash for you. Right, JJ, flash for me again. Flash for me again. Yo, re relax, people, relax. Jimmy Petronas was quoted saying this part is not fake news he said that fraud has reached epidemic proportions in florida scams like this are driving up auto rates for every one of us on the road i'm thankful for the hard work my fraud detectives see how he said that my fraud detectives in tracking these fraudsters down we must continue to work together and do everything we can to uncover these fraud schemes and bring these scam artists to justice now i put that in there that is a direct quote, guys, all right? Keyword, fraud. We know what fraud means. We just kind of went through it. It's, it's, it's not, you didn't, you had no reason to get the benefit that you got. You know, they didn't, they weren't, insurance is there to recoup your losses, not to, you know, it's, it's, it's not a money-making scheme. But this press release points out how important the state of Florida views the chief financial officer's role in regulating the business of insurance. Every single press release that comes out of the state that references Jimmy Petronas is followed by this statement. So it's always a quote, but this next statement is all about the chief financial officer's authority. And we're going to talk a bunch about them, but it says, and this is every press release, the chief financial officer and state fire marshal Jimmy Petronas is a statewide elected official, member of the Florida and member of the Florida cabinet who oversees the Department of Financial Services. CFO Petronas works each day to fight insurance fraud, support Florida's firefighters and little star here and underline, ensure the state finances are stable to support economic growth in the state. Now, look, let's pause right here for a minute, all right, because we will deep dive into the CFO's fight against fraud, and, uh, but I'm going to properly introduce Jimmy Petronas a little later in the class, all right? Um, but in that one statement there, when I talk about how important these press releases are, Guys, this is your class if you're following along for pre-licensing and we were to go ahead and we're talking about the law section, this is, this is how it opens up. Who is the chief financial officer 
an, an elected official. This isn't someone who's appointed. This is somebody who is elected. Um, if we jump, jump down to what I highlighted at the end, you know, talking about state finances, is that not self-explanatory? This person's a chief financial officer. Of course, they're dealing with finances. But the economic growth, because we're going to focus on that later on also, because we tend to think that regulators are here to babysit us. But truly, we're going to find out that those state regulators are here to promote and bring bring companies to Florida. Uh, I love it. A little couple of months back, man, Jimmy Patronus was out there campaigning to get in and out Burger to Florida. What? Guys, I will, I'm down like a fat kid on a seesaw. You don't even know. Like I try to eat healthy and David over here, the student aide, he's, he's a nutritionist. He's all swole walking around like, no, you just got to do your sets, man. And I'm over here like with my 30 pack of cheeseburgers from Crystal's and my two days a week running. Like I got, I got this. Anyway, we're not here to throw, throw shade at me. Um, but where we were is that, uh, this, I don't know where the hell we were. The state of the, the CFO is an elected official, right? I keep on talking about the Department of Financial Services and those acronyms. That was the whole reason. He's in charge of the Department of Financial Services, okay? That's why when you hear him talking about my fraud detectives, we're going to get all into this. But this is important because this is technically our boss, guys. The reason that I've combined these two courses together is because when you haven't been introduced to the Department of Financial Services and the resources that they have, this can get a little overwhelming, right? That's why we're taking 20 hours of the course to go over regulatory entities and what's wrong. But realistically, just like in our podcast, one of the next episodes in the podcast, I think number three, is everything you need to know you learned in kindergarten. That's actually our ethics section that we're breaking into. Why? I mean, come on. Didn't we just talk about the salty crime family? The salty crime family... Do I have to tell you not to stage accidents? Do I have to tell you not to falsify documents? No, because you're legit, right? When I come back a little bit later on, when all we need to know in kindergarten, apparently our next uh, criminal over here, our next hashtag Florida man, didn't get the memo because they owned a clinic and they were putting in fake claims almost a million bucks what crazy money right nothing dude i'm gonna i'm gonna share with you another two boca raton those little high society people running around all bougie be like what are you talking about i don't have an e-class you know <laughs> like some craziness like that no like a hundred million dollars in fraud out there right so don't believe the hype guys what we're gonna do is we're gonna sit back we're gonna drink some cold water and be like Oh, hello, stupid criminals, and point fingers, and then we're going to get an A. Why? Because when it's time to take the test, what are you thinking? Oh, I remember the salty crime family. Who put that press release out on fraud? Jimmy Petronas. Who was the fire marshal, though? That was weird, right? Because I said he was the, the what was it? Uh, he was chief financial officer and state fire marshal, Jimmy Petronas. Same guy, dude. It wasn't like... Jimmy Petronas is the state fire marshal. It's that real quick, Jimmy Petronas, state fire marshal, CFO. It's actually one of his uh, uh, responsibilities because the CFO is in charge of insurance. Well, if you got to burn something down, you didn't burn it down because you were mad unless you're like some, you know, jilted girlfriend throwing kerosene on somebody's stuff in a corner. But we're not talking about the extremist. We're talking about just... The regular person, right? Well, typically, if you're going to burn it down, it's for the insurance money. And that's why it made sense to go ahead and put that underneath the chief financial officer, okay? So, a little bit later, we'll dive into that. But really going to dive into that fraud-free Florida. I, I, like, I like the fraud-free Florida initiative. Now, but back to the CE and compliance periods and all that stuff. Look, despite how long we've been licensed, all agents in Florida got to compete, complete this four hours focused on nothing but... Florida insurance laws and professional ethics every 24 months. I'm driving that in because there's two more questions answered right there. With me writing this course, the Department of Financial Services still requires me to go to one of these other busted schools and do my continuing education with them, all right? Nobody gets special treatment around here, 
right? Now, you don't want me to go run around micro ranting about my boring classes. I'm not going to mention any schools because I'm not going to give them any Google notoriety from me. You ain't going to say, oh, well, Jason said X school sucks. <laughs> well, you might. But you ain't going to hear that from me on Google. You're going to have to tune in to the iPower Moves podcast. And then maybe I'll throw some shade, but probably not. Probably not. Because you might consider that defamation. You know what's funny is that I'm sitting there and I'm doing this from my house right now and there's nothing I can do about it. But I just saw my dog walk by. So she's pretty old. She's not going to go far. But don't worry about that. That doesn't pertain to you guys. Uh, but let's see. Oh, you know, <laughs> there's a note here saying, Jason, do you really want to knock the other schools? <laughs> Hey, David, note to self, put that in front of the paragraph next time, not after the paragraph, right? Uh, but I, I, I'm going to look for the clip. I know which one you're talking about. I, I, <laughs> that, that was from a Web Wednesday, I think. Anyway, does it feel like you've been reviewing insurance law with me? Because as of right now, you just completed a half hour of continuing education, okay? All the time that you spend with the insuranceschool.com, every bit of this content has been authorized by the Florida Department of Financial Services as either pre-licensing or continuing education, okay? So like this, this segment right here, super simple. If you're registered for the law and ethics course, this was your step one, right? So you only have, uh, you only have a total of four classes, uh, sorry, 15 classes, segments total, that equal four hours. If you're part of continuing education, this was your first half hour uh, of your 40 hours. Now, the reason it was only 25 minutes and not 30 minutes is because every hour of class is really only rated for 50 minutes. It's 50 minutes of classroom time plus 10 minutes of a break. So good job on completing that first 25 minutes. Now, uh, do you want to Press stop. Let's hit that. Let's just go into the, the next break because that was good because I dragged the shit out of that.